Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. People in general don't want to get bitten by their pet boas, and this is especially true among beginners. But how do you avoid being bitten? That's the topic for today's video. I'm going to talk about the two types of bites, talk about why bites typically happen, I'm going to talk about the two tools that you need to avoid getting, bit, getting bitten. And I'm also going to comment on the temperament of my baby boa since it's something I'm asked a lot. So if you want to avoid being bitten by your pet boa, be sure to stay tuned. If you're new here, this is the channel for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. So if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate your support and it really helps me grow on YouTube. So boa bites. The first thing I want to talk about is that boa bites happen probably more than most people like to admit. I know I've been bitten a few times over the years. Uh, sometimes beginners have this idea that this is an awful thing and it's, you know, they have to do whatever they can to avoid having this happen. But the truth is, if you're talking about a small to medium sized boa, a bite is typically no big deal. It might leave a few little pinprick wounds from the teeth and a little bit of blood, but typically it's gone within a few days. Of course, if you're talking about a larger boa, it's more of a serious matter. And when you have a large boa with a lot of force bite you, it can often lead to bruising. Large animals, you know, bigger than about six or seven feet, sometimes it can lead to tearing and injury of the tissue. So obviously something we want to avoid. However, this is not likely to happen, especially if you're talking about a small boa. This isn't like this adult crawl key that's, you know, all four feet long. They're just not capable of inflicting any kind of serious bite. And the vast, vast majority of boas don't really have the temperament to bite that much anyway. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what actually leads to bites in a few minutes. But if you do get bitten, just simply wash it with soap and water, you know, keep the uh, bite clean, put on a Band-Aid if necessary. And the majority of times, the, it'll be gone within a few days to a week. Before I'm going to go into detail about the types of bites, I just want to say that not getting bitten is actually very, very simple. Okay, a snake is really not that complicated of an organism. Of course, you know, some people would beg to differ, but the behaviors are pretty predictable and it can really only do damage at the front end, okay, the teeth. And you know, if the mouth makes contact with your skin, that leads to a bite, obviously. So basically, you just need to avoid allowing the snake's mouth to make contact with your body. And this is just the a, uh, principle that any of these snake showmen that you see on TV and YouTube videos, they take out these really dangerous snakes, often venomous. They make this big show of it and they you know, flail around with it, screaming about how dangerous it is. Really, they know exactly what they're doing. They're just avoiding the head and they're keeping their body clear of the head. So if you can do this, you're not gonna get bitten. And that's the reason why people like this never get bitten by these snakes although they do claim how dangerous it is. For them, it's really not dangerous at all. So you will just want to avoid the strike zone of the snake, basically the space between the head of the snake and your body that the snake can breach with a strike. And for most boas, it's, you know, in a cage, a boa can typically strike out about a third, in some cases, up to half of its body. Um, in fact, I have these Pearl Island boas that have a much larger strike zone than most other types of boas and they will often launch themselves out of the cage to try to get food so I have to be careful around that. But you just try, stay out of the strike zone, you're not going to get bitten. And if you just observe this principle and are very careful, chances are you're not going to get bitten, you have nothing to worry about. So avoiding the strike zone comes to most snakes when you're ex not really expecting that they're temperament is likely to bite you. Um, for other types of snakes where their temperament is such that they're likely to bite you, and I'm going to talk about that in a sec, a very easy way you can avoid being bitten is to physically prevent the snake from being able to bite you. And most often that means holding it right behind the head so that it can't reach its head around and bite you. If you do have a snake like this though, you probably don't want to be handling it, but I thought I would mention it because you often see these snake hunting shows where they're going after these aggressive pythons and the Everglades or whatever. And they're often, they have to grab the snake behind the head. And that, that is effective, although again, for a pet snake, you don't want to be handling something that's gonna be behaving like that anyway. And so I thought I would just comment. I 
You can see I'm clearly not avoiding the strike zone of this snake. So I know that the snake's personality is such that it's highly, highly unlikely to bite. And I also know that if I do get bitten by the snake, it really doesn't pose any threat to me. So this is a relatively small animal. Um, you know, I thought someone might point that out in a comment or something, so I thought I would address that. I'm aware of this, and I, for this particular snake, I'm just really not that worried. But if I did have a snake that I was worried about, I would be avoiding the strike zone. Uh, another thing I wanted to comment on, you're most likely to get bitten on your hands or arms just because that's what the snake is closest in proximity to. But facial bites can happen as well. I've never been bitten in the face. Probably not so, an area you want to get bitten. So really keep the snake away from your face. I see people all the time putting the snake right up in their face or even kissing it, things like that. Just really not a good idea. Next, I'm going to discuss the two types of bites that can, you can get from your boa and how to avoid each. And so the first type of bite is probably the type that most people think about that they should be worried about, but really it's not the type they have to worry about. And that's called the defensive or aggressive bite. So some people don't like the word aggression with snakes because it has a negative connotation. Some people just call it defensive. But this is when the snake is defending itself or acting out to avoid being harmed. And a snake that falls under this category is going to give some pretty obvious signs that it's defensive. It's going to likely be hissing, probably striking out, maybe puffing itself up. Uh, snakes like this are likely, even if they don't show these really overt signs, they show some more subtle signs leading up to this. So when you take out the snake that's like this, chances are it's going to start flailing around. It's not going to hold still. It might musk up or defecate on you. Sometimes they go into this limp body position where they're kind of hard to hold and they get all floppy. And so that's a prelude that your snake is likely to go defensive and possibly bite you. So you definitely want to be careful around a snake like that. You can see this particular hog island is not demonstrating those behaviors. She's just holding on gently kind of inquisitively exploring. This is not a snake that's showing the defensive behavior. If you do have a, a snake that's showing this behavior, of course, you're going to want to be careful around holding it. You're probably going to want to just start off really slow, take it easy, maybe not even hold it at all. It might just be more of a display snake or a breeder, uh, depending on how old it is and how big it is and what your experience level is with handling a defensive snake. But the defensive snakes, although people are really worried about this type, that's not what you have to be worried about because people are going to take steps to avoid being bitten by them. You know, if you're catching one in the wild, you're going to grab it and handle it behind the head, something like that. So not something you tend to have to worry about. Which brings us to the second category, and this is by far the most likely type of bite a pet owner is going to receive and that's a feeding bite and this is what happens when the snake misinterprets your behavior thinks that you are food or you're offering food and you get bitten as a consequence and this happens pretty frequently and the um, reason why this happens again it comes back to avoiding the strike zone somebody sticks their hand in the boa strike zone they think the boa is nice and calm when really it's ready to go it wants food and it bites the person so say you decide to go handle your snake and today's feeding day and you're still following the rodents but you thought, hey, I'll take out the snake for a few minutes before feeding the snake. You stick your hand in the cage and the snake can smell the rodents in the air most likely or it can pick up that it's feeding day and you get bitten as a consequence. Or maybe you rarely have ever handled your snakes and the only time that you open the cage to access the enclosure is to either clean the cage or to feed the snake. So the snake has grown accustomed to expecting food every time you open that enclosure. But you know, today your buddy's over, asked to see the snake, you thought you'd get the snake out, you stick your hand in the enclosure, wham, you get bitten. Or another thing that happens sometimes is people are working around rodents, they're dethawing their rodents, or thawing I should say, dethawing isn't really a word, they're thawing their rodents for feeding day, they handle the rodents, they don't wash their hands, and they pick up the snake. The snake smells the rodent on their hand and thinks that they're food, so they get bitten. 
or someone might misinterpret the behavior of a snake. The snake is coming towards them in the cage, flicking the tongue actively, acting very inquisitive, and they think, hey, the snake is signaling to me he or she wants to be held. And then they go up, they go to grab the snake, the snake comes right at them, they don't move away, they get bitten. And there's a really cringy and disturbing video on YouTube that some of you guys may have seen of a woman that goes to handle an 11 or 12 foot retic. They show the retic in the cage. She's coming towards the cage. The retic is getting all excited and wanting to get out of the cage. The cage is open. The retic slithers out and she approaches the retic and wham, it grabs her hand, starts constricting. I really feel for this woman that's not a bite you want to get. A retic bite can be a lot worse than a boa bite. It's a lot bigger of an animal. Not sure what happened in this case, but there's a pretty good chance the woman needed stitches and medical intervention. So if a snake is coming towards you, it doesn't mean it wants to play. And from the expression on the woman's face prior to getting bitten, it appears that she thinks the snake is some kind of puppy dog or something and wants to play and is coming towards her you know, because it likes her and acknowledges her. Really, the snake is just looking for food and it thought her hand was food and she unfortunately gets bitten. And what's really kind of sad about these types of videos is that this is the ammunition that people that want to ban snakes use in order to try to advance their agendas. So as responsible reptile keepers, we have to be very careful to avoid being injured by our animals. You know, even if just, just one person out of millions has something like this happen to them, the uh, animal rights people that want to deny your right to keep snakes are going to go after it and use it as an example. And one more category of incredibly dumb behavior I see a lot that is going to make you likely to get bitten is when you're feeding a rodent or rabbit or whatever and you're just dangling it with your bare hands in front of the snake. And I see this frighteningly large amounts of time on YouTube. Someone's got a dead rabbit, they're just dangling in front of a reticulated python. And the python strikes, grabs the rabbit, barely misses their hand. It's just a really, really bad idea. You don't wanna do this. Um, you can get pretty seriously injured by some of these larger snakes and just provides really, really wrong type of publicity in case something bad happens. So that takes us to the next topic, which is tools that you need to avoid getting bitten. And the first and foremost is this grabbing tool. Okay, and this is just a simple little grabbing tool I got at the Dollar Tree for a buck and a quarter. It used to be a buck, but you know, inflation. There are more expensive ones as well you can get, but basically it just puts about two and a half feet of space between the rodent, which you can grab here, and your hand. Okay, so I always use this to feed my boas. You can see this is probably not a good example to set because it's possible that this still has a rodent smell and that the snake can smell it. So don't do this at home with the snake. Um, anyway, get one of these grabber tools because it puts the space between your hand and the snake. And if the snake does strike and miss the rat, it's gonna hit this grabbing tool and not your hand. And this is really what the people who have these big retics that they're feeding ought to be using. And then the other tool that I really recommend to avoid getting bitten is a snake hook. And this allows you to manipulate the snakes if the snake is being a little defensive, you can hold the head away by hooking it like this. Most importantly, when you're going into the cage, you can use this to kind of corral the snake and to kind of drag it out. And the snake will associate the hook with being handled. You know, if you just kind of gently touch the snake with the hook when you put it in there, over time, the snake is gonna figure out that the hook doesn't mean food, it means it's going to be handled and it's not gonna respond in feeding mode. So I actually didn't use a hook for quite a while. I only got this hook a few years ago. Uh, you know, for the majority of my snake keeping experience, I either just wristed and stuck my hand in there or in the cage to get this, the bow out. Or I kind of threw a pillowcase or snake sack over it, something like that. But trust me, this is well worth the money. Uh, this really helps uh, with the snake handling and it makes you a lot more likely not to get bitten. The last topic I want to address in this video is the temperament of boas. And I'm very, very frequently someone asks me, what is the temperament of this boa? And referring to one specific one of my babies. When I'm asked this question, I do my best to advise on the potential temperament of that boa. But I, in general, I can't make individual recommendations about individual boas because I deal with so many baby boas. 
uh, that are born every year. I can't get to know each and every one on a personal basis. When I do handle them, it's mostly to transfer them from one cage to another, like when I'm cleaning their enclosures, um, you know, when I go to feed them, when I sex them, I have to handle them. But I don't uh, handle each baby boa a lot. The other thing to bear in mind is that many baby boas are a little bit defensive and it's a survival mechanism. If they were calm and docile in the wild, they would be less likely to survive and make it to adulthood. So many baby boas will be a little bit hissy, a little bit nippy, and in general this lasts for about six months to a year in most cases, and then they calm down. And the type of boa also can affect the temperament of course, and I've discussed this a lot in the past. Some boas are just generally calmer than others. I would say that the best individual temperaments as far as the pet boa are the Colombian boas like the Coops Pestel or the Branchia boas. Uh, in general, the true red tails are not quite as good as far as the temperament for strictly a pet quality boa, something, a boa you want to take out and handle and just have a very calm animal to enjoy. Um, other types of boas, like Central American boas, dwarf boas, tend to be a, even a little bit more hissy, but oftentimes it's just a bluff. And these are just general generalities. You know, there are individual boas of every type that go against the trend. They're either really docile or they can be really aggressive and defensive as adults. I would say though that of all the boas I've dealt with, you know, probably hundreds over the years, there's only a very small handful, a few animals, which as adults continue to be defensive and, you know, pose a challenge to handle. The vast majority of animals are just handleable and calm, and if they do have a little bit of hissiness or nippiness, it's typically gone by about six months to a year. So in general, you don't need to be overly concerned about the temperament of your pet boa. If you really want one that's going to be calm and it's not likely to bite, again, I would suggest get a Colombian boa. They are overall the calmest and most docile of the different locality boas. There's other types of locality boas that are pretty calm too. Uh, and again, I've gone over this pretty extensively in some of my previous videos. But as far as guaranteeing the temperament of any specific baby boa, that's just something I can't do. A lot of the temperament relies also not just on the boa, but on the handler and on the experience of the husbandry the boa is getting. If your boa is stressed, it doesn't have ideal husbandry, or someone is handling it and stressing it out and handling it the wrong way, it's more likely to act uh, defensively and bite. So a lot of it does come down to the handler as well. So those are some thoughts on boa bites and how you can avoid being bitten. I hope the video was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.